with stocks, as you do cost averaging, buying, and they move from account to account, I don't know how anybody ever keeps track of what the cost basis is of a stock. And, and when would it matter to me what that cost basis is? So if it's in an investment account, whatever monies that you paid or will pay for stocks is your cost basis. It's first of all, you don't have to track it. If you're starting with a new account, fidelity will always keep your cost basis or wherever you are. I think you said fidelity, you will have your cost basis on your statement. So if you buy a hundred shares of X, Y, Z today and next month you buy 10 more, and the following month, month you buy uh, 20 more, and the next month you buy 10 more. You have a total cost. You will always have a cost of what you spent for each one of those buys. And that is your, that is your cost basis. And that is always, uh, you know, that's never going to change. So it, if you're using our tracker, then you can keep track of it on the tracker or uh, transfer it over to, from your Fidelity account, which will track your cost basis. So every time you purchase a stock, you get a trade confirmation. The trade confirmation is going to say what you, what you have, what you just bought, and how much you paid for it. That's your cost basis. Now, you don't need to keep all your trade confirmations, but you can keep them all until you get your year-end statement. When you get your year-end statement, all your, um, all your uh, confirmations of your cost basis are going to be on that year-end statement. So you don't need to keep all the trade confirmations. At that point, you can throw them away, shred them up, and you'll have your cost basis on your last statement. So... Um, you can, it's not, it's, it's, it's really, it's really not hard to keep it. You just gotta, you know, um, keep those statements and you'll have it. Then when you go to sell the stock, it matters because if you have, um, 500 shares of XYZ stock that you bought over, you know, seven different buys, then you need to know what that cost basis is so that you can figure out what the capital gains is. So when you add up all seven buys, that seven buys is going to add up to, you know, uh, X amount of dollars. And you're going to subtract that from your sale price to know how much capital gains. You're going to have. 